Welcome back. This is Open Exchange, and we are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Moti Lalo Swal studio. Well, we are getting into pre-open, so let's get in our uh, our derivative analyst. We have Chandan Tapadia who joins us. Hi, Chandan. Good morning. How are you feeling this Friday morning? What are the trades you have for us? Good morning, Nigel. Thanks. Uh, feeling fantastic on this Friday and looking to buy the dips in the market. So looking at the Nifty setup, uh, recently we have seen good run-up from the lower levels. Two days back, Nifty managed to surpass the buzzard day high of 17,971. But yesterday it fell to hold a higher zone and witness decline. And today, due to the global market, we might also see the decline. But I believe the decline towards 17,888 to 17,900 zone could be utilized as a buying opportunity with support of 17,777. And index has again potential to head to us. Resistance swing high of 18,181 zone. If I look at the data setup, FIS long short ratio is near to 25%. Uh, India VIX is below 13 zone. So lower volatility with a stable put call ratio also indicate the declines could be bought in the market. But now the concern is from the bank nifty that has failed to surpass the buzzard day high near to 42,000. But still we have support near to 41,200 zone. And we believe that on decline with support of 41,200, this index can again witness some recovery to us 41,750 kind of level. Looking at the stocks, in last two, three days, we have seen good momentum in IT, gas, selective auto, tires, and defense-related name. And we believe that such a stock, specific action, could continue to be in the market. So first trading idea, that is buy on Apollo tire. This stock is holding well. Uh, it is all set to give the breakout from its pole and flag patterns, also surpassing its falling supply trend line with some built-up of long position. So recommending to buy on Apollo tire with a stop loss of 325. And this stable stock can head to us 355 zone on the higher side. Second trading idea, that is buy on MGL. Uh, this stock has given a consolidation breakout of last 14 months with decisive hold above 900 zone. So because of this price setup, we can see the movement of 3 to 5% on higher side. So one can buy MGL with a stop loss of 900 and we have target to us 960 in the counter. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks a lot, Chandan, for joining in. Well, the pre-opening rates are settling slightly higher. The Nifty is up about 50-odd points. Uh, stocks in focus, Adani Group stocks are actually coming back. Uh, Adani Enterprises up almost about 10 odd percent. And a lot of banks, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank are up in the green. Reliance, LNT as well are looking pretty good. Would be interesting to see the moves on both Precall as well as on Minda Corp. So just pull up those uh, stocks for you. Um, there has been a small trade that has happened and we understand that Minda Corp will be acquiring a little under 16 percent in Precall. Um, Precall is up 3.5%. It's had a very, very strong run in the last one year or so, perhaps in anticipation of some deal. And, of course, the synergies are very good for Minda Corp as well. Uh, as we've been telling you, Precall is the second largest manufacturer of um, instrument clusters and uh, fuel-level sensors, so it makes sense for Minda Corp as well. But more on that in a bit. Both those stocks are well in the green. The other space to look at is technology because um, a lot of these stocks have had big moves in the last couple of days. Tech Mahindra is up about 11% just in two trading sessions. Omka Tangsali, the senior research analyst at Access Securities that tracks this space, joins in now. Omkar, one thing that's working in favor for these uh, stocks is valuations, right? So Tech Mahindra, for example, it's trading at what, about 16 times forward compared to TCS and Infosys at over 20 times. Do you think there is a strong case for further upsides in names like Tech Mahindra? Yes, definitely. I mean, valuation comfort is one of the primary reasons that uh, Tech Mahindra is, looks to be very lucrative. And we should also be considered, and, and one reason for that, for the lesser valuation is major exposure towards the European side and the telecom side. But I believe sustainable deal means resilient business demand and uh, continuous or, or I can say for consistent uh, performance will uh, lead to an investor's uh, confidence uh, going ahead. Good morning. But do you prefer Infosys over Tech Mahindra? Uh, yes, definitely Infi uh, over Tech Mahindra. Why? Because Infi has more uh, of uh, the large deal bins on the pipeline. See, IT, I believe, uh, have uh, the more of a client servicing and more of a dependency. The Infi has uh, huge large contracts uh, on, on their uh, deal pipeline. So, dependency of these businesses is very much higher as compared to, you know, uh, other sectors, so uh, the primary vendors, the deal pipeline used to be strong, the revenue growth momentum is strong, that's why the valuation is premium, but I believe uh, we can also expect, you know, uh, the infeed to surpass the growth 
uh, as as compared to TCS or other sectors or, or other companies, uh, where we expect around 13 to 14 percent growth uh, going ahead, where TCS has compared 8 per to 9 percent of the growth for the next two, one to two years. So, in fees, uh, better bet, I believe, uh, for, for going ahead. Mm, okay, I got that. You know, just to come back, Omkar, on Tech Mahindra. Uh, the uh, the buzz, of course, doing the rounds has been, uh, you know, new uh, new man at the top. Uh, of course, we spoke with the current CEO exactly a month ago in Davos, uh, and he said nothing imminent uh, is the feedback that we got. Uh, but how much of a premium would you place on this change? Or you think even if somewhere hypothetically, uh, you know, somewhere, something were to come in the next couple of days, with this 12% pop that is already in the price, what's your sense? No, I believe uh, that definitely the premium is there. I mean, I mean the, uh, the the kind of leadership that's going to be there is likely to be have the positive impact on the stock size. I believe it, it's a bit of priced in, but I believe the pop up in the price is not because of the leadership. Uh, it's, it's because of the uh, the uh, the upside potential it has also and the you know increasing the inferior. Uh, uh, the investor confidence is a mixture of a board uh, or two to three components as well one should look upon. One should also look upon that the tech M is also have the sustainable dividends over the period of time. So in on the on the earning front, on the uh, uh, earning front and change in the leadership will, uh, the combination of the two to three components help them to gain the pop-up. And also uh, on the positive side of the uh, 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 the benchmark indexes as well. Okay, uh, in the mid-cap space, you like persistent systems. That one has been rallying ever since its numbers. It's sitting at a fresh 52-week high. What kind of upside do you see there? See, for, on, on the persistent, they have acquired VGLAD and Data Globe, which have helped them to grow uh, with the newer uh, hyperscalers and partner ecosystems. Uh, now they have started gaining the momentum. So I believe uh, the valuation is still very, very uh, high as, as compared to others. But valuation, I believe, is a combination of the growth, the growing team, uh, growing sorry, growing return on equity and uh, growing margin expansion. I believe these uh, capabilities will help them to grow exponentially going ahead. So I believe around 15, 20, uh, 15 to 20 percent uh, from the current level in, in one next one to two years uh, going ahead. Okay, all right, we will leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, so that's on the technology stocks and uh, the way forward over there. By the way, the pre-opening rates have settled down about 50 odd points. A uh, couple of stocks uh, that we're looking at this morning that's perhaps exerting pressure. Hero Motor Corp is down almost two and a half odd percent. SBI Life, UPL, Tata Motors, TCS. So some profit taking Tech Mahindra is also down about one and a half odd percent. Uh, so do keep that on your radar. On the upside, Bharti Eta is looking pretty good, up almost about half odd percent or so. Other than that, in the broader markets, uh, pre call is the one that's surging. So three and a half percent higher on pre call now post that deal as well as uh, some of the Adani group stocks. Uh, Adani uh, Power is up almost about 3%. But let's get uh, Mitesh into the picture now to get a, a view in from him. Mitesh, what would the big call be at 910? Uh, I would still go with a buy on Larson and Turbo Technology Services. I think many of these IT stocks are showing strong signs of an uptrend and a gap down could be a good chance to get into them. Keep a stop below 36.60 for targets of around 38.60. Uh, Mitesh, uh, any thoughts on the big movers uh, from uh, yesterday? You know, HAL, BDL, uh, you had these mid-cap IT stocks, Emphasis, Nucleus, Mastec, etc., which moved sharply. There was a PI Industries which surged. Uh, any of these on your radar? Yeah, Prashant, the entire uh, mid-cap IT range I, I like. In fact, uh, LTIM, uh, OFSS was a call yesterday. Uh, LTDS is a call today. So I think that entire space is looking very strong. That about a massive breakout ha happened on the charts of HL. I think uh, while typically after a big tunnel, you might get mild, uh, a mild pullback kind of a move, I think the stock is at least uh, targeting its highest level, closing around 2780, 2785 levels, and eventually even will cross that. So very uh, strong signals of an up move starting there. Hmm. Uh, got that. And uh, what about PI Industries? Again, a, a big move yesterday? Uh, unfortunately, I haven't looked at the chart. Okay, all right. Uh, Indigo, any thoughts, uh, Mitesh? How are charts looking? 
uh, there was that block the stock ended about 4% lower yeah so in fact you know, yesterday i was contemplating a sell call over there but then that uh, news of the block was there which means that the stock was anyways bound to open uh, down i think the 200 day average is at about 1875 that was uh, what i was looking at as a target but chances are that it will break that and once that happens 1825 is the uh, level which the stock can settle to us Okay, Mitesh, thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, so the big deal that uh, we are currently talking about is Minda Corp planning to acquire 15.7% in pre-call. Pre-call is the stock that's up almost about 3 odd percent. Now, there are a lot of synergies for Minda Corp once uh, this acquisition or this stake buy comes through. Uh, the combined business could become a much stronger entity in instrument clusters. Remember, pre-call is the second largest manufacturer in the world for instrument clusters, uh, which are the various, you know, displays, the indicators that you, uh, that enable a driver to operate the vehicle. Precall also provides connected vehicle solutions like telematics, onboard navigation, mobile screening, etc. Uh, it's a very strong balance sheet. It's a debt-free company. Uh, it's sitting on free cash flow of 112 crores. So it makes total sense for Minda Corp to buy this stake. In India, in fact, Precall's market share is 50% in the two-wheeler segment. 70% market share in the commercial vehicle segment and the financials have also been very strong. Just a couple of questions, of course, that we would have for the pre-call management. One is uh, whether the deal was in the works. Could this be a hostile takeover from Minda because the management has said that they are committed to the business for the long term and the promoters have absolutely no intent of undertaking any secondary sale, nor does the company have intent to raise equity capital. So was this uh, a hostile takeover in the works? Uh, we'll have to find out about that. What are the growth targets for the company? In fact, Vikram Mohan, the MD of Precall, is joining us on the phone line to talk about that. Mr. Mohan, good morning and thanks for joining in. Uh, tell us a little bit about this deal. I mean, uh, you put out a release on uh, the BSE saying that the promoters have no intent of any secondary sale. Uh, could this be a hostile takeover from Minda Corp? Uh, I would not like to comment about uh, information that I do not have or spe that is speculative in nature, ma'am. Uh, I was sure. made aware of this uh, late last night. And uh, since then, I have spoken to a couple of our key institutional investors as well, and they are very firmly backing us as well. Uh, so if Minda has such a, a plan in place, uh, I'm not aware of it, and I think we have countermeasures to take them on. Mm. Hi, good morning, Vikram. You know, there was a large trade that took place today, but you're saying that your investors, we'll have to see who was the seller. But uh, uh, a any color on who, who potentially could it be? More than 2% equity has uh, changed hands in pre-open. Uh, I am I'm, I'm not aware uh, right okay. now and I will not comment on it. All right. So as of now, you're, you, uh, you know, as per your disclosure, you have said that you're not a seller. What if the price is better? If it was more lucrative, would you be looking at it or you definitely don't want to sell? Uh, I definitely do not want to sell. Okay. I'm 1,000% committed to this business. <laughs> Okay, because okay. I think our have all the building blocks in place. We okay. have all the necessary technologies in place. Uh, we have signed uh, three technology mm. agreements with leading global companies from Silicon Valley and uh, um, Europe, uh, which mm. will further help hone our uh, product offerings. We mm. showcased all of this at the recently concluded Auto Expo, Got which it. had an extremely Got good it. reception. Our market share is going up. Uh, yeah. We have a very strong order book. We yes. have uh, zero long-term debt. We are generating very heavy cash profits. We have the capacity and we know we are on a growth curve. So why would right. I sell when I the growth prospects uh, of my business? No, you made it, you made it very clear. thousand percent price is not a consideration. Uh, Vikram, could you, just a couple of questions. Uh, could you tell us what is, uh, how much do the promoters own and any other large uh, institutions uh, who you said you've spoken with a bunch of them uh, who've made it clear, uh, I mean, how much of the uh, ex uh, other than promoter equity is with you, according to you? I mean, wh what's your sense, since you've already spoken about, to people? Uh, about 37% of promoter we have equity. I okay. have at least 16% of institutional shareholders that have committed that they will stay committed to us. So 37 okay. plus 16, you're saying uh, you, you, uh, you, you, know, you have on your side in terms of that they, they, will, not, they will not sell, right? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, now, uh, you said you have countermeasures, uh, Vikram. I mean, could you elaborate? I would not like to talk about it. Uh, I'd like to keep my uh, cards close to my chest. And as and when developments happen, we will, I mean, 
this is if, if uh, it's a Vikram, game of uh, poker, I'd like to keep my cards too close to my chest. Sure, uh, Vikram, you said you're not, you don't have any intention to sell, but do you see any synergies with Minda Corp? Even if you don't sell, would you work with them at any point in time? Uh, no, they are competitors through one of their businesses, but we have taken away a lot of uh, market share from them. And okay. I think in terms of technology and positioning, we are in a very, very solid footing uh, with regard to our instrument cluster business, uh, driver information, automotive electronics business, which is the only business mm -hmm. that they compete with us in our portfolio of businesses. So I don't see any synergy in working with them. Okay. And can you tell us what are the growth targets for your own business? I mean, this time in, you know, in the quarter gone by, your profits have almost doubled. Uh, what is the, uh, the growth plans that you have for the business? Uh, we expect to beat uh, the market by at least uh, 5 to 7 percent, quarter mm. on quarter in the coming quarters. All right. Mm. Uh, you know, Vikram, you're doing close to 500 crores per quarter. Uh, so that'll be, a, you'll end up the year maybe closer to around 2,000 crores odd. Since you're positive on growth prospects, where do you see this number headed for FI24? And also in terms of margins, you're doing around 11, 12 percent. Can you hold on to it? Uh, I would be comfortably be able to hold on to my margins because I think yes. the the worst is behind us in terms of the IC shortage and the premium freight that okay. uh, we've been paying, which has been eroding margins. And that and on growth? the worst is us, uh, I think, in the coming quarters, which should only get better for us. And um, I think we would be able to maintain this growth rate, if not better it. I would, don't want to give a forward-looking number um, for the so next Vikram, couple of quarters. Vikram, you've done 20% growth. You can maintain that for FI24. Yes, I can. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Vikram, for joining in and uh, giving us more clarity on what's happening with the pre-call Minda Corp deal. They're saying that they were made aware of this deal only late last night and they definitely do not want to sell any stake. That's the moot point. All right. Let's see where this goes. For now, pre-call is up almost about 3 odd percent. Uh, the market has opened in the red, down almost 100 points for the Nifty. The Sensex is down about 380 odd points and the Bank Nifty is under pressure as well, down almost about half odd percent. Uh, the stock that's taking a bit of a knock this morning is Nestle India. It's down almost about 2 odd percent. A lot of brokerage views and commentary coming in post the conference call. So we'll keep that uh, as one of the stocks that we're looking at. Uh, Tech Mahindra is also under pressure, down about 1.2 percent. Not a good opening for the market at all. In fact, uh, the Bank Nifty is now inching towards a 200-point fall. Apart from Nestle and Tech Mahindra, all the IT stocks are actually under pressure. HCL Tech is down 1%, Vipro, TCS are in the red as well. Something like uh, Divi's Lab, Indusind Bank, Dr. Reddy's, Aisha Motors are also under a bit of pressure right now. While Hero Motor Corp is your top Nifty loser, down about 2 odd percent. On the upside though, stocks like uh, Ultratech Cement, Tata Steel, Bharti Etel and BPCL are holding up with gains of anywhere between half to about 1 odd percent. So weak opening for the market. Uh, let's just take a look at how uh, pre-call is performing right now. Remember, the stock of course is in the green, up almost about 2 odd percent, but 5 percent now on pre-call. The promoter is saying that uh, they are not going to sell definitely. They are completely committed to this business and they are growing it. They don't see any synergies with Minda Corp. So they are uh, sort of, you know, uh, making that categoric that they are not going to sell. Uh, the promoters are not going to sell any stake. The stock is up. Let's check out what Minda Corp is doing. That one, both those stocks are up almost about 5 odd percent. Uh, so very interesting developments over there. But otherwise, for the market, under a bit of pressure, down almost 70 odd points, weak start. For well, that's right. Weak start, uh, so to the trading <coughs> session. But a couple of stocks are actually doing well. Oil India continues its up move for this week itself. The stock is up 18 percent. It's up closer on 1.5 percent odd. NMDC as well has opened up the green with a gain of pressure on 1.2 percent odd. And a couple of the South Bay cement uh, companies as well, they are doing well. India Cements is high with a gain of pressure on a percent. Uh, it's been a big underperformer, but that's bounced back. And Ramco as well is a little bit higher. There is a buzz that there is a price increase that's being pushed through in South India. But demand, I understand, is rather weak. So let's see whether or not that's absorbed. For the time being, there's an attempt being made out there. We have a couple of other uh, stocks that are losing out. First Source is down close to 3 percent. Loris Labs is down 2.5 percent. And Biocon as well is down close to around 2% odd. On the index, well, we went to sub 17,950, and now we are holding about that. Holding on to that 17,950 will be most crucial. The Nifty Bank, though, is taking a harder knock today, down close to 200 points. Prashant. Uh, absolutely. And so it's a, you know, it's a start which is uh, tentative, but, uh, you know, it's not as bad as what uh, the ASTX was indicative of. Uh, there was a bit of a swoon early on, but now we are... I mean, this is still early, early on, but uh, we are up uh, off the lows. 58 points uh, is, is how much the Nifty is down by. 
Uh, Nestle is down, uh, if you can have some of these intraday is up quickly. Nestle is down about three and a quarter, I think, uh, as we mentioned, results reaction. Uh, there is uh, Hero Motor Corp, which Sonia was talking about in the pre-open session, that is down about two and a quarter percent or so. Uh, LTI Mine Tree is down about one and a quarter percent. LTTS is down about one and a quarter. Midcap Tech, of course, uh, was an area which did very well yesterday, but then you know uh, Nasdaq got smacked down overnight. Angel One is down about one and a half percent, one thousand one hundred and fourteen on Angel One. Doctor Reddy's is down one. Coforge and Persistent is down about one and a quarter as well. So this is, I mean, just some rub off from the negative uh, close that we had on the Nasdaq. Indusin Bank is coming up with volumes as well uh, and a one and a quarter percent cut. Uh, Techem after twelve percent gains is down about one and a half percent this morning. Uh, so that's to be expected as well. Prince Pipe is coming up as the top volume led gainer. If you can have it up. Uh, it's up uh, 3%, 596 on Prince Pipe. Huge volumes, by the way. Uh, there is uh, Adani Wilmar, which is up about 3.5%. Again, strong volumes. Uh, we were talking about the defense names with uh, Mitesh earlier, uh, both BDL and HAL. BDL is coming up with gains again, 1% so far this morning. Uh, Schaffler uh, is another one, uh, which, of course, is reacting to earnings. Uh, it's up about 4.25%, 2948 on Schaffler. Adani Green is up about 3.5%. PNB Housing is up to 2 and 3 quarters. Uh, and there is uh, Minda Cop and uh, Precall, of course, which are reacting to that sto story, which I think clearly, without a doubt, is a bit of a, a takeover battle, uh, which, is, which seems to be brewing, as we just heard from the Precall management. No intention to sell is what they told us. Railtel, Dalmia Bharat, All Cargo are some of the other names which are higher. All Cargo, of course, has seen such large price damage and it is uh, up uh, a little bit this morning. You know, nothing out of the ordinary or nothing huge in that sense. Uh, it's, a, as I said, a tentative start. More advances as compared to declines. That's about 1,100 stocks up and about 700 stocks lower. And the Nifty itself is down about 70-odd points uh, this uh, morning. Our market master is uh, joining us now, Mihir Vora, Director and Chief Investment Officer at Max Life Insurance. Uh, Mihir, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm stuck on that earnings question, Mihir, because, uh, you know, uh, the, we, we finished up with the third quarter earnings this week, and uh, one gets a sense that uh, there is a bit of a slowdown which is underway. And I'm not sure whether we can completely attribute all of that to input prices being high and it, it being a margin problem. One does sense a bit of a, a demand slowdown situation as well especially in the lower end, across consumer categories. So I just want to start by asking you, what did you and your team uh, make of uh, the earnings? And what are the takeaways for the market from here? Good morning, Prashant. Always a pleasure. See, as far as the earnings are concerned, the, the two big chunks, uh, which is uh, banking and financial services and IT, they haven't uh, really disappointed. In fact, we've mostly seen positive surprise on these two big index components. Uh, yes, there are some uh, lingering issues on the consumer discretionary side and the FMCG side. More, I would say, on the FMCG side. Uh, there is some slowdown in the rural part even now. Uh, but apart from that, we haven't really seen any negative surprises. Whatever volatility that we have seen in some of the segments is mostly on the global commodities, uh, cement, those kind of segments, not really the consumption or the financial services side. So I, I would say overall, the results season wasn't too bad. Uh, the rural economy is something that we are now hoping it will turn around because hopefully the worst of the rural inflation is past us and the terms of trade now should incrementally be better for the rural economy and uh, some amount of income generation and pricing power should come back. Uh, so FMCG and the rural space, the lower end segments are, are something to watch out for, I would say. Valuations are not that expensive. The stocks have underperformed in this broad basket. But I think urban is something that we did see a lot of action in, in terms of pent-up demand, etc. There maybe valuations are a bit stretched, so we may see some underperformance on the urban consumer discretionary side. Okay, underperformance on the urban consumer discretionary side. That's actually the big talking point even, not just with domestic investors, but with global investors as well, as to how inflation is definitely pinching pockets here, especially in the rural market, and that's hitting both urban and rural consumption. By the way, the market's still under a bit of pressure right now. Precall is coming off after the promoter said that they won't sell stake and they see no synergies with Minda. So Precall has lost its uh, gains. It's now up just about one odd percent. Uh, how are you feeling about this entire sector now, uh, Mihir? I mean, autos, auto ancillaries, there's so much brewing here. After a long time, earnings are coming back. There's some talk of consolidation as well. A takeover battle perhaps brewing. Uh, what do you do here in this space? 
Uh, auto is something that we are hopeful about, uh, especially the four-wheeler space. Uh, Two-wheelers uh, fits into the rural theme and there, I think, in the K-shape scheme of things, things are not looking that great uh, even now. But as far as cars are concerned, commercial vehicles are concerned, SUVs are concerned, there is good good uh, demand and good pent-up demand. We are just about barely bef uh, at the pre-COVID levels in terms of volumes in these segments. And I think there is a lot of steam to go. And we are also past, the, hopefully, the peak of the the margin pressures because of commodities and the chip shortages. So that, that I think, should, you know, be a tailwind for the segment. Okay. Hi, Meer. Good morning. Meer, you know, the insurance space uh, got uh, hit in the budget out of nowhere. And some of the stocks, they reacted very aggressively on the downside. But that's still an underpenetrated sector, right? Maybe multiples will not be as high as earlier envisaged. But how do you approach the space from here on? And any preference? Sure. Uh, see, most of the insurance companies have uh, have clarified that the high value sales probably are less than 10% of the overall buy. So the budget per se should not make that much of a, of a difference uh, to this segment. And as you rightly said, you know, the penetration levels of insurance are very low. And this is one segment and uh, one industry which really provides long term capital uh, for the government's borrowing plan. So I don't think there is anything that the government will in the long term do to destabilize the insurance segment and valuations have become attractive in this space, I would say. Uh, I, you know, even if you look at the, the larger insurance companies, a lot of them have good persistency ratios, which means that even if they don't sell new policies, the assets under management, the you know, overall uh, AM growth continues at uh, 15 to 20%. So it's a, it's a long-term compounding story, I would say. And uh, I, I'm not too worried about the space. Valuations are, are attractive now. You know, uh, Mir, I, I was... Uh... There's a stunning statistic, and I was uh, also made aware of it recently, but uh, the, if you just look at the number of policies sold, right, look at the CAGR growth in terms of the number of policies for a, by private life insurers, over the last four years, the growth is some 3%, you know. Uh, so that is, uh, you know, it kind of, the penetration story is absolutely, you're absolutely right, but uh, the, the growth is just lacking, and that's the worry, that these high-value items, it kind of limits the total market opportunity, right? Uh, because this is the segment where growth was coming. Uh, anyway, just uh, your, I mean, so what are you most excited about, apart from banking and financial services? I mean, that's the space which everyone likes. Uh, where else are you finding uh, opportunities which you'd like to buy uh, as uh, stocks slide a little bit or sideways for some time? Uh, so we've talked about this before, and I think the theme remains the same, which is mm. India as a domestic economy will grow better than the rest of the world, which is the global economy, which means we are still playing the domestic consumption space, include the financials, as you rightly mentioned. And I think the, the capex and the you know uh, private sector capex and real estate cycle is yet to pick up in a, in a big way. While we have lots of tailwinds in terms of the government's push towards Atmanirbhata, PLI schemes, etc. Uh, these are going to ramp up much more in the in the coming few years. So I think the domestic capex, uh, the domestic infra real estate, and I think the defense indigenization theme is something that we are excited about. Okay, the defense indigenization theme. Okay, um, are there any spaces that you would stay away from where you expect further earnings downgrades, perhaps in the quarters to come? Global commodities is clearly one space where uh, prices are still holding up because of, uh, first because of Ukraine, uh, second because of uh, China opening up. Uh, but if the global economy does continue to grow, grow at a suboptimal uh, uh, pace, as we as we believe, then even global commodities should come down, including oil, steel, etc. So that's one space I would be cautious on. Uh, another space is uh, pharmaceuticals, where again we are seeing mixed results. Uh, of course, it's not a very big part of the benchmark, but these are some of the spaces that we would be, you know, cautious about. Okay, all right. Uh, um, Mihir, what about this uh, entire, you know, capital goods industrial theme? That seems to be playing out, right? Uh, what's the preference out there? Uh, so, you know, as I discussed, the the... The domestic economy is doing well, and hopefully even the rural segment, which is not doing that great, should pick up. So consumption continues to be the bedrock for India. But that, that I think, can only give us 5.5-6% GDP growth. It cannot give us 7 to 8% growth. Uh, the additional 1% to 2% growth has to come from infrastructure, capex, and real estate. And that's where I think the government is focusing on, uh, which makes us positive about uh, these segments. Uh, on the on the government side, we have all the EPC companies, uh, including road building, lots of airports, etc., getting constructed at a, at a at a good pace. So, a lot of EPC companies, and these are the new grid companies which are not leveraged. 
I think most of the old ones are gone. So we have a new bunch of EPC companies. On the on the capex side, also you know uh, we we are seeing a lot of traction in some of the sub segments uh, like electrical equipment, motors, etc. So that's again le leading us to believe that there is some capex happening on on that front. And I think all of this will also require a lot of buildings, which again brings us to the EPC companies. And uh, the defense indigenization, of course, is a is a mix and match. A lot of companies in the capex space as well as the different industries have sub subsidies or exposure to steam. So that's a much wider basket, including public sector units in the defense space so that's basically the overall lay of the land for uh, the investments mm -hmm. theme sort of Okay, by the way, the market is cutting its losses a bit. So the low that we hit was 17,927 and now we're back at 17,986. So it's a bit of a recovery from the lows that we're seeing. Amir, any of the softer commodities that you like? I mean, and there's lots happening in this whole ethanol space with ethanol blending now being, you know, the government's focus area. Uh, a lot of sugar companies have told us that they're doubling their capacity in the ethanol space. Um, anything in the softer commodities that interests you? Uh, yes, we have a decent exposure uh, exposure to uh, not only the uh, sugar uh, space, but sugar with ethanol and also some of the equipment manufacturers which supply to this space. So we are positive as a long-term theme. Okay, all right. We will uh, leave it at that. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mihir. Uh, have a great day and a good weekend as well. As we were telling you, the market has actually cut its losses now. It's um, almost moving into flat terrain, which is interesting. Uh, the dips are getting bought and it has been three days of a good run for the market. So perhaps, uh, you know, that's something that could continue. Cement is picking up. Altotech Cement is your big winner right now. And then you have Steel, JSW Steel, a couple of other metal players like Hindalco also looking pretty good. But after reporting a very strong quarter three, the Indigo CEO, Peter Elber, says that demand continues to be strong and the airline is confident of achieving the higher end of their capacity outlook of 13 to 17 percent. Shireen caught up with Indigo CEO Peter Elbers and began by asking him about the quarter gone by, the supply chain risks. More importantly, there's a lot of competition coming in this year. How are they going to brace themselves for that? Take a look. The third quarter have been a, a wonderful and good quarter for us, which was actually, to be fair, long awaited for. Um, after all the difficult quarters we had throughout COVID and even the first uh, quarters recovering from COVID, uh, we have set in motion a wide range of actions and initiatives, and these have coincided with a very strong market situation, actually. Uh, and that combination of a strong market situation initiatives on our side has led to these, uh, these very strong uh, Q3 results. Will you be able to hold yields uh, and deliver and replicate the kind of success that you saw as far as Q3 is concerned? And more importantly, your guidance of being operationally profitable for FY23, excluding Forex losses, do you hold that guidance? Well, there's always some seasonality, of course, in every quarter, and, and obviously Q3 is a very strong quarter. But with the with the solid demand we're we're seeking, made us to uh, to be confident looking to the future. I'm not giving any precise numbers in terms of outlook or in terms of precise. Uh, uh, margins going forward uh, but again the range of initiatives we're taking the solid market demand the upbeat uh, economic situation in India all these factors uh, make us very confident in, in looking forward uh, and uh, basically providing a capacity uh, guidance which we set initially for the entire full year 23 in the range of 13 to 17 percent we will be ending up at the very high end of that more like 17 to 18 percent basically underlying uh, that solid demand and confidence we have in the market. So let's understand the, the initiatives that you have taken. One, to address the supply side issues. B, to take on competitive pressure, which is starting to build now. I'll get to the Air India order in just a second. But both on addressing the supply side issues, uh, what can we expect beyond the measures already taken? Well, we have uh, indeed the supply chain uh, challenges, which is a global challenge uh, uh, indeed. Uh, we have taken various measures to, to address that. One was to extend some of the existing leases uh, and, and keep some of the fleet in the operation, which we were initially uh, supposed to return. Uh, we have introduced a wet lease operation in order to, to deal with that. Again, all temporary measures uh, to deal with the global supply chain challenges against the backdrop of a very solid and strong uh, demand here. When it comes to dealing with, with competitive challenges, we have taken the initiative, in fact, to reinforce 
um, the, the, the strong points which have made Indigo uh, into a, a, a wonderful company, what it has been doing for the past 16 years. So we have reinforced our customer promise on time performance being one of them. And I'm very, very proud actually on the teams that were back uh, in, uh, in November and December when it comes to the number one on time performance. International operations are expected to grow faster. That is what you've guided for. You've also said that you expect the international operations to contribute nearly 23% uh, of, uh, uh, of your asks as, uh, uh, and you've guided for about 30% in FI24. Now, you know, I, what should we expect in terms of additions as far as destinations are concerned, inking more code share, code share agreements with airlines, etc.? How do you really see your international plans building on where you are today? Well, Indigo started 16 years ago as a domestic as a domestic carrier. Uh, we've had a wonderful journey over these years, and today we do operate uh, a total of 76 domestic destinations, supplemented by 26 international. So, if you look to today's composition in terms of destination mix, it's about uh, 25, 20, 25 percent um, is on the international side, and there's there's uh, 75 percent on the domestic side. When it comes to our total production number. It's, it's even slightly less, it's more in the range of 20-ish percent we do international. With the growth of India, with the economic development of India, with the position India has taken more and more on the global stage and with foreign investments coming in and in Indian manufacturers making products here and exporting them, uh, we, we do see clearly an international growth which is, which is stepping up. Um, and in addition to that, the share of Indian carriers in the international uh, traffic, uh, we believe still has a lot of room to, to improve and to increase that share. For 2023, you gave me a list of the destinations that you are looking at adding on. How many do you expect to add on in 2023 itself in terms of international destinations? And how many, what is going to be the flight frequency as well? Well, in, in terms of, again, today, 76 domestic and 26 international, I do expect that for the year 20, the calendar year 23 or fiscal year 24, we, we would expect to have some anywhere between 10 and 15 new destinations to be opened in a mixture of domestic and international. The ones we have announced already domestic are the Ramsala and Nasik, uh, and international, as I mentioned uh, earlier, um, uh, we, we do I, Nairobi and Jakarta as, as ones. We're looking at Central Asia, and depending on the speed of further opening of China, we'll further open up China as well. So I, I do expect that this 10 to 15 new destinations would be roughly split 50-50 between domestic and, and international. Um, um, for us, it's very important to continue to build on the strength of what, what has made Indigo to what it is with an unparalleled domestic network with all these destinations. And, and not only destinations, really, it's also a set of 400 different routes we fly direct in the country. And that, that in itself, I think it's, it's a great asset for all the Indian travelers who can now fly direct from one point to the other uh, within the country itself. But let's now talk about the competitive landscape. You've got a resurgent Air India. Uh, you've, of course, got Vistara as well. And, of course, the two are likely to be merged by the target, of course, is uh, March of next year. Uh, you've then got Akasa. And we don't know whether Jet will eventually fly in 2023 or not. But there is a possibility of that. How are you addressing the competitive landscape? And what do you make of the two orders placed by Air India? Uh, and what it would mean as far as your own fleet addition is concerned? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's uh, a, a couple of questions you combine in one, and let me try to address all of them. Um, speaking about the, uh, the order itself, I think it speaks to the, to the confidence and the, uh, the belief in the growth of, of India as, a, as an upcoming aviation giant. Today, India, I would say, is, is underserved when it comes to aviation itself and the growth we're facing actually today and the expectations going forward uh, basically are a, are a proof of the belief in, in the further growth of, that Indian, of, the, of the Indian market. The order which is being placed is, is obviously long awaited for and, and a, lot have been, uh, a lot have been speculated about. And if you were to take the 
top 10 airline orders in the world today, uh, two out of these 10 and probably two out of five uh, are, are in fact by Indian carriers. One of them is Indigo. We do have uh, a little short of 500 aircraft on order based on, on existing orders. And now there's the Air India one. So that basically speaks to the, uh, to the potential and the size of the market uh, in India. Um, and, and as such, uh, Indigo, uh, we draft our own course, we draft our own, uh, our own plan. So um, the order itself, uh, it is there. I think for Indigo, we, we placed our order uh, for growth already in 2019. We do have actually a steady flow of deliveries already uh, now and in the years to come. And, and obviously for us, we continue to build on that, on that, that uh, order book we're having. What can we realistically expect in terms of annual deliveries? What are you hoping for in terms of deliveries in 2023 to start with? You also spoke about uh, some of the temporary measures like the wet leases, etc. Uh, again, on that front, what can we expect in terms of fleet addition for the calendar year? Well, we, we, we are uh, still assuming a steady influx of, of aircraft. And if you look just to the, the number of, of, of aircraft we're having uh, and the actual size of it, um, we're, we're in discussions, of course, with suppliers, what's going to be the precise moment of deliveries and so on. Yet we still do expect uh, a 40 plus uh, set of deliveries uh, for the year 23 to come. And we also talk to you then uh, on what you intend to do with the cash that you have on hand. Uh, you know, over 10,000 crores at this point in time. What do you intend to do with it? Uh, when it comes to, to the cash position, your, your question, uh, I think it, it helped us a lot to have a strong cash position throughout the difficult COVID time. Um, it helps us to have a solid foundation. And from that, we do, we do look forward. And I'm not going to give any speculations uh, how to precisely uh, allocate it or how to precisely do it. Again, we're, we're investing in our company and in the growth of, uh, of Indigo going forward. All right, not too bad for the markets as well. We are holding at around that 18,000 odd mark. Reliance Industries is playing a good knock. We had pointed that out earlier. One of the heavyweights need to put their hand up and Reliance Industries for the time being, that's the one that's done pretty well. Time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll connect with Sanjay Kumar, the MD of IGL, to discuss their past quarter's numbers. We'll also get chatting with Dr. Ja of Midani and Harshit Kapadia of Ilara Capital will be joining in to discuss the defense space on the whole.